Are you using illegal shopping bags? This right here is against the law. I'm not kidding you. In eight states, shopping bags out of the plastic are banned. And in 13 states, there's municipalities and counties that have banned the shopping bags as well. Do you live in one of those states? You know, we don't want the shopping bag police to get you, so you watch out. I have a solution for you. Stick with me, and I'm going to show you how to make the fastest, the easiest, the strongest, it's recyclable, it's washable, the coolest bag. You're going to love it. Hi, I'm Di with Sister Chicks Quilting and welcome to my channel. Today, I'm going to veer off the quilt path a little, but there's quilting in one of these bags. I can't wait to show it to you. I'm actually going to show you three ways to make one of these bags. They're awesome. This is the bag. See, it's kind of big. It just kind of takes over, doesn't it? Isn't that cute fabric? I never make these unless I get the fabric on sale. So this fabric, 50% off. The lining for this bag is just a stripe, but it was three bucks a yard. So it was heck a deal. Then I've made them before out of fabric left over from curtains. I think they would be awesome made from men's shirts. You could put patches together. Me, I'm going to show you something similar at the end of the video. You could do so many things to get the fabric to sew these shopping bags and go in the washing machine. They're strong. They're not going to break in the parking lot. And look at this. You just wad them up, stow them in your purse, and there they are. You always have your shopping bag with you. Now, I've used these for more than just groceries. Blue Blog takes hers to retreat filled with project and quilty stuff. I've taken them overnight. When my luggage overflows, I throw it in one of these. It's not a bad carry-on either. Before I start with the video, I want to thank and answer a few of you viewers out there. Vicki Schlagenhoff, I'm happy to share my mistakes with you. I have so many and make them all the time. In fact, <laughs> I bet I'm making a mistake in pronouncing your name right now. Thanks for watching. N. Rugner, Andalyn K, Patricia May, and Valerie Pacman. Yes, you're going to see the quilt finished. And I'm talking about the Buckeye Beauty quilt. You bet I'm going to show it in a future video. Then Shelly Culver, thank you for the super thanks. And I recognize that I'm very blessed to have Blue Block as a quilting buddy. She is the best. And last, I want to answer Donna Parker. And I think there were about three others that wanted to know the size. The quilt finishes at 77 inches wide and 94 inches long. It's a big one. I put it together with four blocks across and five blocks down. And then I added the borders. And with the borders, that measurement is 77 by 94. You guys have fun with that Buckeye Beauty Block. It is a load of fun to make. Let's get going on today's video. This is what you're going to need. I use 22 inches, give or take an inch. For the outside of the bag, you need a 22 wide inch piece and it needs to be the width of the fabric. Then you need the same size for the lining. You're going to need a sharp cutter, a marking pin, fire. You're gonna need fire, nylon webbing that you can get at any craft store, a pair of scissors, and a ruler. Now I have already prepared these two ends and you cut it in half. So this is a yard of nylon webbing and you fold it in half like this. Take your scissors and cut it. Then you want to get your fire. There we go. And just singe the ends of that. It's going to melt together and that is going to stop it from fraying. And I saw a little fray piece on this end that we're going to take care of. All right. We can put that aside and this is ready to use. I'm going to cut the outside of the bag and the lining of the bag together at the same time. So I'm going to lay them on top of each other, get them all smoothed out, bring in the ruler. This is about 21 inches. This does not have to be perfect. Okay, I've got my fabric on top of each other 
Now, this is not an exact science. I said 22 inches square, but really, if you have a 21 inch piece of fabric, use it. The shopping bag police aren't really going to care. I am just gonna square this up to a good size and I'm just gonna make it the size it comes out. You can do that with these bags. Let's see what the other side is going to end up as. It looks like it's going to be just under 21 inches. And is that okay? Yup. It's okay. So it looks like I'm working about 21 inches square. Again, if it were 20 inches square, we'd have an incredible bag. So it doesn't really matter. So I'm going to turn it like this and I'm going to take out a four inch corner piece. Let me show you how I do that. I just use my marker. It's heat erasable. But you know what? I just realized I don't even need to use my marker if I don't want to. But you can. I'm just taking a four inch square corner out of this bag. We are ready to rock and roll. There's one more measurement I want to do before we go to the sewing machine. I am going to go in six inches. One, two, three, four, five, six. Make a mark and then make an inch mark like that. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then I'm going to turn this over and do it on this side. I want it on both sides of this bag. So what do you think of my nails? I thought it was a great idea when I had them done, but I hate them. So <laughs> I'm going in on Tuesday for a new set. Anyway, I thought the tips would be cool. No, I don't like them. My nail tech was totally laughing at me. The next step is to lay out your handles, already fired handles. And I always put two pins in because if you put one pin in, it's easy to go crooked. I like to see it straight. Making sure I'm not going to twist it, I bring it around, lay it down, and pin it in. And I'm going to do that to the other side as well. Now, I've got a few tips and tricks. You probably could figure out how to make these bags yourself, but I've made so many of them. I have some tips that's going to help you make them look oh so much nicer. Let's go to the sewing machine. The first thing I want to do is sew the outside of the bag together. And I'm going to put them right sides facing each other, just like this. I'm going to pop a pin in because I want to make sure I get them even. Here's that four inch square we cut out right here. I'm going to sew all the way across the bottom of the bag. Again, I'm not gonna tell you what kind of a seam you have to take. If you wanna take a five, inch, five eighths inch seam, go for it. <laughs> I'm going to take probably half an inch and I'm pinning the other side. It's kind of like the size. If you're off a little bit, you're off a little bit. It doesn't really matter. Here we go. Now you want to do this to the lining of the bag. Part of the reason this bag is so strong is because it's made with a lining and the lining is quilting fabric too. Now this bag is going to be turned through the lining. So when I sew it on the very bottom, I'm going to leave an opening, okay? at the iron. I like to iron my projects as I go along. So I'm just ironing this seam to one side and on the bottom I'll just iron it down. I'm not really going to set it. The real star of the show is this seam. 
and I want to open it up and press it open like this so it's easy to close when I finish the bag off. It's time to make some corners back at the sewing machine. Now there's no order, but to box the seam, you just simply match this side seam with this bottom seam. I always put a pin in it, and then I put the rest together with my fingers. So there's the center seam, and here is the box seam. At this point, I'm going to sew the handles on, just because I don't want to be stuck by the pins. For the rest of the tutorial, the handles are secure. What we need to do now is turn this bag to the inside. Hold the corners and press it. Now, a lot of people have a hard time remembering when they're sewing a bag, which way to put the lining in. The key is to have right sides of fabric together and on the inside is easiest. That's how I always remember it. So you stick the lining down inside and you find the side seam, which is right here and pop a pin in it. And then you want to go to the other side seam and pop a pin in that one to hold those side seams in place. Then I just kind of take the bag like this and stretch it out and pretty much it fits because I've sewn the same side seam. So let's put some pins in the bag. You know what I did? <laughs> I made a mistake. There. How many of you saw that? I pinned both sides of the lining to this bag. I want it to lay flat. I'm stretching it a little bit as I go, and I'm going to pin it all the way around like so. Here we go, and one in the middle. And then if you're going to take any seam deeper than the half inch seam, this is the seam to do it. The one at the top that's going to hold it all together. So I have my machine for all the free arm that it is. It's not a lot, but it's plenty for this project. And I'm going to put this in like so, right about the half inch mark. I'm putting it right on the sides back stitching. I want it good and strong. And then I'm using the half inch mark on my sewing machine. Now I have come to my first, that's my first handle. And if you want, you can do this. Just backing up like so in a little X and I'm back to sewing the seam. And that worked out pretty good. So the bag is sewn together. We just have to turn it inside out. There's a couple of things we could do. I'm going to um, wait until I turn it to do that. And that's at the ironing table. So you go down, you take a little dive down into the lining, find the bottom hole. Here it is. Stick your hand in. Oh, that's not it. <laughs> Here it is. Stick your hand in and pull out the bag.
do a little hokey pokey turn yourself around and there's no reason to go in this hole ever again so i am going to fold it shut and it's easy to fold shut because i pressed it earlier and i'm going to sew this bad boy shut i'll meet you at the ironing table because pressing it is going to give it some good shape i'm going to lay the bag down here and pull and stretch it apart and then come in and press those seams flat now you do have to be careful on the nylon webbing just don't give it a good hard press because it'll stick to your iron but i'm going to do that on both sides then i'm going to pull out these corners and iron those because an ironed corner is a sharp corner <laughs> no i'm not the quilt police this video only has the shopping bag police in it. But I'm a presser. I'm an ironer. My mother taught me to iron, and I've told that to you in other videos. Yeah, I used to iron my dad's National Guard uniforms. They were gnarly, man. Okay, kind of fold this over like so from corner to corner, and look what you have here. So the bag this is the lining it's kind of laying flat did you see how i tucked in those corners and you know what this is a grocery bag this is probably the last time you'll ever iron it but it's nice to iron it to give it to someone they think wow that's an impressive grocery bag or whatever they want to use it for. Now let's do it to the side that really counts, the side that we're going to see. So the first thing we do is fold our corners out and I kind of roll them and press them, press the bottom good, and I'm gonna do it on this side. So I'm gonna take this seam, I'm gonna fold it that way, hold those two corners and kind of shake this bag out. Then I'm gonna pull on the side seam, look at that. Isn't that cool? And we still don't have everything done. We're still gonna sew this down. But I'm thinking we have a mighty fine bag. All right, now I'm gonna open this up and shove the lining in. And those press marks are already there, so it's laying quite nice, don't you think? So I'm gonna hold these two seams together right here. There we go, and do the same on this side. Roll it down and press it in place. Thinking it takes longer to press this than it does to sew it. If you're thinking of turning this video off, don't do it because I have two surprises for you that you did not think of because I know who thought of them and it was my daughter-in-law. Anyway, I have two surprises to show you on these bags. Let's go to the machine and top stitch this down. Okay, dokay. Starting again on the side seam. Isn't this just the slickest trick I'm showing you? Oh, there's one little thread. Let me snip that. We must have perfection. Fold our bag in. I have my fingers down inside opening them and now it, look at that. Isn't that just the coolest? Off to quilt camp you go with all your stuff in it. Now, I promised you I'd show you some other variations. Fasten your seat belts. You're gonna love these. Ta-da! Now, I not only made one, but remember I showed you one at the very first of the video. So, it's a set. You know, this is kind of a nice gift for someone. In fact, I just got a wedding invitation in the mail today. The young people that are getting married today are very conscious about the earth and would probably love these. Maybe I can put a gift card to the grocery store in their area in it. That might be fun. But a set with two. You know, I feel like I'm on the shopping channel because not only is it a set, it's a triplet set. Oh my goodness. This is too cool. Can you see that this is quilted? 
<laughs> it has got insole bright in it and a layer of polyester. So this is going to keep your ice cream frozen, your milk cold, anything, your produce fresh, and it's washable. This was a lot of fun to make. My daughter-in-law Shawnee was the one that first told me about this. She said, why don't you do an insulated one to keep cold stuff cold? And I thought, oh my goodness. So this is a set. Pretty cool, right? Now there's more to come. Yeah, just like the shopping channel. We're going to lower the price. We're going to give you this for... Oh, can you tell I watch the shopping channel once in a while? I do. I told you that I made these out of leftover. Let me show you a couple of more options. These are the leftover curtains. And I've already marked this set. I think I'm going to sew these up tonight when I'm done with this video because I need a new shopping bag. I made them out of Halloween material for Michelle who loves skeletons. So she has got skeleton grocery bags and she loves them. And then I made this quilt. This is the quilt that I made. I'll put it right here in the corner. I made it for a friend back when I really didn't know how to measure at all. So I had tons of fabric left over. <laughs> but I had all of these blocks left over. You could piece these blocks together and make a bag. But better yet, look at this. I had, here, let me do this. I had this block left over. It's called a disappearing hourglass block. And I put it together. I went ahead and framed it a couple of times, put this around it. And this sucker is almost 25 inches square. Um, the fabric was, it was, it was 24, 25 inches. I went ahead and put fabric handles on it. The nylon handles just didn't seem right with this bag. But the lining, oh, I put it all in the bottom. The lining is totally pieced. Can you see that? And that's okay. And you know what I'm gonna do with this one? This is gonna be given to a very special customer who hauls her quilts back and forth to her long armor, me. I think it's gonna be fun to give her this bag. So this bag is cool, it's big. I'm not gonna grocery shop in this bag but I am going to put a quilt in this bag. There's so many things you can do with it. So again, there's really no measurements, but I'm gonna recap what I used. Start with about a 22 inch square of fabric and have two of them, one for the back, one for the front, one for the back, and then have two more, one for the front and the back of the lining and you're good to go. And if you only have a 20 inch square piece of fabric, go for it. The only person that might stop you is the shopping bag police who wants to measure your bag and say, that's not 22 inches square. I'm being silly now, but I had so much fun making these. I love these. I use them so much. I hope you use them. I want to give this to you. I've given you everything you need to make these. I think you should make them out of fun, stuff like old sheets, old pillowcase, or men's dress shirts from the thrift store, or leftover patchwork pieces from your quilting. There's just so many options with this bag, what you can do. But the rule is, the number one rule is, don't you dare pay full price for the fabric for this. You got it? It's got to be on sale and a darn good one at that or a good upcycle. Until next week, thank you for watching. I had so much fun with this project. We'll see you next week. Bye.